Here, an example of a two-way ANOVA. The question is, how much sleep medicine should we give and how much for whom? We have factor A to dose, so we give 10 milligrams, 40 milligrams, or 70 milligrams, and then factor B to gender, male and female. So we see, and in each cell here, you see how much, how many minutes it took people to fall asleep. So 10 milligrams, the total amount of minutes to fall asleep was 186. 40 milligrams, the total amount to fall asleep was 139. And 70 milligrams, the total amount for them to fall asleep was 254. So you see, 10 milligrams, that was 186. 40 milligrams, 139. 70 milligrams, 254. So the middle here, 40 milligrams, seems to be the best dosage. That will be the main effect of factor A. Then factor B, we look at the male, and total, the male took 197 minutes to fall asleep. Female, total was 382 minutes to fall asleep. And then we have an interaction effect. The interaction is this blue cell the red cell, the purple cell, the green cell, the orange cell, and the bright blue cell. All these are separate conditions, and then we compare these to each other. So for example, blue cell was 58 minutes, the red cell 42 minutes, the green cell here 128 minutes. We see the n, the small n, that's the um, number of people per group, was 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And so forth. The total amount of people was 24. Right? We have 6 times 4. It's 24. The levels in factor A was 3. 1, 2, 3. And the levels of factor two, uh, factor B was two, one, two. Now we can compute, based on this, we can compute the ANOVA table. So we get a uh, within variation sums of squares here, divided by the degrees of freedom is a mean square of 70.57, then for the interaction, we get a sum of square of 14.5 divided by 2 is 7.29. For gender, we get 1,426 divided by 1, 1,426 of mean squares. And for dose, we get 835 divided by 2 is 417. And now, if you go down here, the F value for the dose, if is the mean squares of those be divided by the mean squares within. So those mean square 417 divided by the within mean squares 70.57 is 5.92 right here. For gender, same thing. Mean squares of gender 1426 divided by within 70 gives us a net value of 20. And for the interaction, we have 7 divided by 10 is 0 0.10. So this is our F value that we observed. Now there's two ways to do this. We can, same thing that we did with the t-test, we can calculate an F critical for each, for each F value. That means this is the F value that's right at the 5% significance th threshold. If we get an F value that's bigger than F critical, right, if the observed is bigger than F critical, we speak of a significant F test. Right, so we know those 5.92 is higher than 3.55. This would be a significant result. We don't know the exact probability because if we just look up the F critical, it just tells us is it in the significant area or not? 
Same thing for gender. We, we obtained an F value of 20. We know that the F critical, when we look it up in the table, is 4.41. And for the interaction, we observed um, an F value of 0 0.10. We know that F critical is 3.55. So here we see that the observed F value is smaller than the critical. So this will be a non-significant result. So if you look down here, for those, if the F value that we observed is bigger than F critical, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. For gender, the observed F value is bigger than F critical, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. For the interaction, the observed F value is smaller than F critical, therefore we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we uh, stay with the null. Another way, right, the way SPSS does it, it looks at your obtained F value and figures out the probability, the exact probability of obtaining this. And here you just have to look at if the probability is smaller than 0 0.05. Right? SPSS looks according to the degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom one, degrees of freedom two, picks out the appropriate curve and figures out, okay, let's say you get a 3, what's the probability of obtaining f value of 3? 